Last week, I showed how you can set up scrolling and parallax scrolling using a manual technique. But today, I'd like to show you two OpenTunes features that'll make this process so much easier. And that's what we'll look at today. Hello friends. So today, I'd like to very quickly show you these two OpenTunes features that'll make setting up background scrolling easier. But if you need to do this in a manual way, or just for part of an animation, then you might want to take a look at last week's video, as I'll be skimming over some parts today that I explained more thoroughly last week. So I've started with the drawing of the buildings from last week, and I've placed this in frame 1 on this column. Then I'll take a copy of that, I'll insert a new column, and I'll rename the two columns so it's clear which one's which. And then I'll extend both drawings to the length of the animation, plus one frame, as I explained last week. So I want this to last two seconds, so I'll go to frame 49. And when you start your new level, you see the size of the drawings it's creating. So because I'm going left to right, I'm interested in the width. So the width is 1920 pixels. And I want to move the drawing in one column to the right of the other by exactly one screen width. So I'll select on this frame here, in the building's right column. And to move that to the right, I'll use the animate tool. And I want to move it using east and west. And to move it by one drawing width, I enter the width of the drawing, which is 1920 pixels. And that then moves to the right by 1920 pixels. So you can see it there. And now what I want is when I move the left drawing to the left, I want the right hand drawing to follow with it. And to do that, we attach them on the schematic view. So you go to the Windows menu, Schematic. And all you need to do is to connect the left hand drawing to the right hand drawing. So the right hand side here, the red circle, click and drag to the left hand side of the right hand building column. And that means whatever animation you apply to the left buildings will also apply to the right. So here I've got the left building selected. I'm on the Animate tool. And to move the left hand drawing, the right hand follows along with it. So now they're connected on the schematic view, we only need to do this on the left hand column. So on frame 1, we'll set the start position by clicking in the east-west box on the options bar here and then pressing enter. And this creates a keyed position for this column at the zero pixel position. Then on the last frame, frame 49, we need to move this drawing one full drawing width size to the left, which you can do by dragging it here. And you notice a key appeared on frame 49. Or you can enter in the east-west box the drawing width, but as we're moving to the left, it needs to be a negative value. So we'll enter minus 1920 pixels and press enter. And that's exactly one drawing width to the left. And you can see this by going between frame 1 and frame 49. The view of the buildings appears exactly the same. And last week I showed you how you can collapse these two columns into a sub-egg sheet and then repeat the animation for all of the frames except the final frame. So in this case frame 49. An alternative is to go to frame 48 and it'll show the calculated east-west position for that frame. So if we click in there and press enter, it'll add a key for that value. And that means we can delete the final key on frame 49. And then the animation from frame 1 to frame 48 will be a continuous cycle. So now we can delete the drawings on frame 49. And as I showed you last week, to repeat this animation, the easiest way it's highlight both columns, collapse them both to a sub-egg sheet, and then you have 48 frames without any keys that you can repeat by selecting them all, and then in the right-click menu, choose Edit Cell Numbers, Repeat, specify how many times to repeat, or enter a frame number, and hit Repeat. And now you have a continuous animation repeating for the period that you need. So that showed how you can set up an animation cycle for a set period in your scene. But if you want the animation cycle to run through your whole scene, then you can use the next OpenTunes feature to cycle to the end of your scene. And it's ridiculously easy to use. All you need to do is to extend your animation by clicking on some frames and either dragging them out. Or you can right click on one of the frames and choose Edit Cell Numbers Repeat. And we'll extend this up to frame number 480. And if you click on any frame in that column, then right click in the header and choose Set Auto Markers. That'll set the markers to play the animation from frame 1 to frame 480. But if you play at the minute, it's play one cycle 
and then freeze at that one position. And to make it cycle to the end of the animation, all you need to do is click this little icon here to the right of the animation cycle. And then you get the squiggly line running through to the end of the scene. And now when you play the scene, the animation cycles to the end. But if you only want the animation cycle for part of your shot, you could break your shot into two different open tune scenes. So that in one scene, you make use of this feature to repeat the cycle. And then you assemble both scenes together in a video editor. So that's all I wanted to show you this week. And setting up scrolling this way is easier, but it does involve using the schematic, which might not be obvious at first. But I think you'll soon get used to it. And the cycle feature is such a useful option to repeat any animation made with the animation tool. Why not give it a go and see if it helps you? I'm sure it will. And that's a guarantee. Oh,